immunological memory is one characteristic that is very important specifically for the adaptive portion of the immune system. So what happens is there is an initial primary immune response where the, um, where the body is first exposed to the antigen and during this time there is a lag period of about three to six days. So that's the kind of the downfall of this whereas the innate immunity would respond immediately but the adaptive immunity takes three to six days. However, what is really important is that there is a secondary immune response. So this would be the second time that the body is re-exposed to the same antigen. There's a much more prolonged, more effective response to that antigen. And so within hours or days, the immune system will mount a response. So this graph shows us what this happens and shows the amount of time approximately where we see here the primary and the secondary immune response. So the primary response is going to be occur after a short delay, three to six days, where the immune system is primed in that it is, it first sees that antigen and so it develops the antibodies. However, after there's a second exposure, the great thing about this is that there's an immediate response almost, um, almost immediately and much stronger than would be for the innate immunity. So it's much more specific. So let's look at active and passive humoral immunity. So remember, whenever you see the word humoral, think liquid, specifically B cells. And so in this case, it occurs when the B cells, the B lymphocytes, encounter antigens and they produce specific antibodies against them. So there's two subtypes of active humoral immunity. And what active means is that the immune system is actively working to make antibodies. So either it can occur naturally and in this case, the body is exposed to a bacterial or a viral infection. An example would be mumps. And the body naturally is going to form antibodies against that antigen. Or it could be artificially acquired. And artificially acquired, acquired would be the example of the flu vaccine that we should be getting every year for flu season. So the flu is actually, what they're doing is they're giving you a, they're giving a vaccine with a dead or a weakened flu virus. So it's attenuated, just means weak. And the nice thing about this is it does spare us the symptoms of the primary response. Uh, during, if it's naturally acquired, we have to kind of suffer through the the symptoms, where if it's artificially acquired, then we don't have to. So those are the two types of active humoral immunity. Then there is passive humoral immunity. And in passive humoral immunity, the B cells are not challenged by antigens. And this basically means that the immune system is not actively working to make antibodies. So the person is given the antibodies. And there's two types of this. There's naturally acquired or artificially acquired. So the naturally acquired, the best example of this is when the fetus receives antibodies via the placenta directly from the mother. However, artificially acquired is sometimes necessary. Sometimes there's an emergency. For example, let's say there's a rabies attack. Um, there's a, a venom attack, something like that. That person needs to receive that, those antibodies immediately. And those antibodies are referred to as gamma globulin. You may recall that the globulins are plasma proteins, which are important in forming antibodies. 
So our next slide is showing us a chart of the different types of humoral immunity. And again, humoral immunity means it's all B lymphocytes. So all of these are B lymphocytes. So active is what the is referring to what the immune system is doing. So if it's actively working to mount a response, it would be one of these two categories. If the immune system is not working to mount a response, in other words, the person is being given those antibodies, then it's passive. So naturally acquired active would be when the person comes in contact with the pathogen, like the mumps example. Uh, if you if you receive if you get mumps as a child or if you get chicken pox as a child, uh, if you encounter that antigen, there's a lot of people that that say let your let your child be exposed to everything, so their immune system is going to actively mount responses and form those antibodies. Artificially acquired would be receiving a vaccine which contains a dead or a weakened virus. And examples of this are the mump they do. Back when I went first had to go to kindergarten, before I could even go to kindergarten, they required the MMR, which was the measles, mump, mumps, and rubella vaccine. That would be the artificially acquired active humoral immunity. So the flu vaccine is a great example of the artificially acquired active humoral immunity. For passive immunity, passive immunity, remember this means that the antibodies are just given to the person. And naturally acquired passive, the best example is the fetus via the placenta. And then artificially acquired would be antibodies that are needed for a snake bite, for a rabies shot, something like that. So antibodies are immunoglobulins. So when you hear the term IgG, that's referring to immunoglobulins. And immunoglobulins are gam the gamma globulin portion of the blood and they're capable of specifically binding with antigen that's detected by the B lymphocytes. And there's five different classes. This is a molecular image of what most antibodies look like. Antibodies tend to have a Y structure. And so there's a, a region of the antibody that is variable and a region that is constant. So the five classes of antibodies are M-A-D-G-E. So if you remember MAG, that will help you remember those. And you should know the different categories that they fit into. So for example, the IgM is the first antibody that's released. And it is it readily fixes and activates complement. And complement, remember, is a part of the second line of defense. It's a group of proteins. The IgA is something that we naturally have in mucus and other body secretions. And it helps to pre prevent the entry of pathogens. The IgDs attach to the surface of B cells, the B lymphocytes. The IgGs, as you can see, are the most common, about 75 to 85% of antibodies in the plasma. And they cross the placental barrier. So again, crossing the placental barrier means natural passive imm humoral immunity. And then finally, the IgE is active in some allergies and parasitic infections. And it also triggers mast cells to be activated and basophils. And both of those cells have granules that are going to release histamine.